So today for my second podcast, I'm here with Matthew Nito, founder of Makeup by Matthew. And uh, let me tell you, if you don't laugh at least one time through this podcast, you just gonna got a sense of humor. So what's up, Matthew? How hello, you doing today? Hello, hello. How are you? Is this your very first podcast you've ever been on? It is. <laughs> it is. How do you feel uh, being on a podcast? Um, it, I mean, I'm not nervous at all, you know. I like it. That's so. cool. And your setup is really awesome, so it's very comfortable. Yeah, that's sweet. Yes. So um, one of the things I want to talk to you about is your new thing. Like I just said, Matthew with makeup. Makeup, <laughs> makeup <You are> by <laughs> Matthew. <laughs> uh, so, so for everyone watching, it's Makeup by Matthew on Facebook, my Instagram, and my TikTok. Um, so what was your question, though? So how did you get started with it? Um. Well, I've always been a creative person, you know, all my life. I have always been artsy and just into just anything arts and crafts. But during COVID, during quarantine, you know, being locked down, I just we needed something to do. And I when we were able to finally like leave the house other than work, I just went to five and below and bought like the cheapest palette. And I was like, I'm going to start you know, getting into makeup and trying something to like kill my time while the madness in the world's going on. And little did I know it was something I was actually like really, really good in. And now my studio has grown so big and my makeup collection is pretty out of this world. And I started pretty much from a $5 palette to anywhere from hundred dollar palette and it's just I don't know it just grew within the last three years and now I'm over a thousand followers on Facebook and it's just it's awesome so there's a couple things that I want to hit on of what you just said but one of the things I want to start off with is so our brother's girlfriend Katie did she's a, a fantastic makeup artist she is did she have like a little influence on she why 100 percent did she 100 percent did so when um lucas started dating katie and i saw what she um who what she was all about and who she was and i started like creeping on her instagram and seeing like what she like i said what she was all about and saw like how incredible she was that was like me opening up my eyes like that is that's what I want to do like and then that's kind of where I was like let me go grab like that five dollar palette my cheapest brushes and just see what I can do and go from there and I'm just I in my eyes feel like I'm slowly progressing to that status of Katie um cosmetics by Katie for everyone that's wondering by the way um, she's phenomenal makeup artist and she, yeah, no, 100%. She's a huge inspiration. And I tell her that all the time. Like anytime I see her or, um, she comments on my stuff all the time. I just tell her, I'm like, you know, you're one of the people that absolutely influenced me to start. And I wish I would have known her earlier in my years because like Luca said in his podcast, um, with you that he didn't want to be someone growing up doing music at such a, an old age. So that's why he went to school to have like a backup plan because he didn't want to be someone that was you know, not getting anywhere with music and he just wanted to be successful in life. And Lucas has always been that kind of a person. And, and I wish I would have met her sooner because I'm slowly becoming successful with my makeup. And, you know... I think that's why Lucas and Katie, they mesh so well together because they're just so driven and just incredible people. But yeah, they're they're great. What kind of tips have Katie given you to like, or does she give you tips, I should say? Oh, she gives me tips all the time, you know, like on my blending and, you know, what not to use on my face or what to use on my face, what kind of brushes to use for certain things and... um when makeup expires, when to use just certain products. And it's just, it. the makeup world is more complex than I thought it was. I thought it was just, you know, putting a little bit of eyeshadow on your eye and, you know, boom, you have a, a look. But no, it's 
it's a lot more than that. It's, you know, taking care of your skin and, you know, like you said, um, before you restarted the podcast because we we did do a little <laughs> outtake um i'm 30, me, huh? i'm 33 years old and um putting makeup on my face it's starting to show some lines in my face that i um what we like to call wrinkles and i don't <laughs> really i don't really like those and um it's you know it it shows that you really, at a young age, really need to start taking care of your skin. And you don't realize that until later on in life when it's too late and those wrinkles are already there. And I, um, so what are ways to, what are ways to take care of your skin? Then? Moisturize, you know, sunscreen in the summertime, just stuff that we really don't think about when we're younger. You know, when we're younger, all we think about is, Ooh, let me get that bronze skin. Let me get that tan or, you know, let me just pretty much just what's the best I can possibly look without the repercussions and stuff like that. Um, it's more so, no, we need to moisturize. We need to look at the UV index and see how strong that sun is. And take. we need to take care of our skin because I don't know if you have ever seen Freaky Friday when Lindsay Lohan switches lives with her mom and she like looks in the mirror and she's in the body of her mom and she's like, oh, I'm the Crips Keeper. <laughs> Literally, that's how I'm feeling right now. Like I look in the mirror and I see those wrinkles in my face and I feel like I'm the Crips Keeper. Like I feel like I'm just old as fuck, but I'm not. But the not. thing is though, we went to Dave and Buster's and they're like, so what are you, 23? And you're like... But yeah, but people think that I look young, but in the eyes of ourselves, we think differently than others. Like people might think that I'm 23, but when I look in the mirror, I'm seeing things that other people aren't noticing. So like I see wrinkles and I see, you know, crow's feet, which are from smiling too much in my eyes and just, you know, certain things that other people aren't noticing. When people say that I'm 23, they're only getting a quick glimpse of me. And, but it's... So so one thing I wanted to say is, um, kind of to go back, you said that you reached a thousand followers on Facebook. I did. I am at, last I looked yesterday, I think I was at 1,035 followers 35. on my face, my Facebook. Yeah. And yep. I'll tell you what, that's actually a lot harder to do. I feel like than get a thousand followers on Instagram or get a thousand followers on TikTok, you yeah. know? So for you to reach that on Facebook, I feel like it's like a whole another level of yeah. success so and then you do your live streams on just strictly facebook right just on facebook but i have been thinking lately that i will start doing at instagram but most of my following is on um facebook i do post every picture that i post on my facebook i do post on my instagram but i feel like most of my following is on my facebook um i don't know i'm um more of like the older crowd I'm not 18 or in my 20s and I feel like that crowd does Instagram and so like most of my friends are more used to the Facebook era so I feel like that's where my crowd mostly re re um, revolves around but um, I would like to you know start doing Instagram or TikTok but I, I'm gonna be honest with you I try to do the whole TikTok thing I can't do transitions <laughs> and I can't do you know um the voiceovers and stuff like that and I the other day at work I got um I got schooled by a uh 19 year old she was like telling me like the lingo nowadays and I I have never felt more old in my <laughs> life. Like she goes, "Do you know what Riz is?" And I'm like, "I don't even know what Riz is." <laughs> I I so we're trying I she's trying to tell me what Riz is and um I said I I said, "Oh, so this word's not hip anymore." And she goes, "No. That and don't ever say hip." <laughs> and I said, "So hip is out." And she's like, hips totally out and i said Is like like, a, like so as out as 23? like my actual hip because i just about threw my own hip out <laughs> and she um she started dying laughing but like the words that are coming out like um 
I guess like when someone has a big ass, it's there's another word for it. It's um, I um I can't. She's just told me all of these words. Um, but uh, I just. I'm like, what has this gen? I have nothing against this generation because I love, I love it. I think it's so cool. But the lingo, I can't, I can't get behind it. It's, it's crazy. Well, what I will say is that you should honestly learn everything that you can with TikTok and really take advantage of yeah. it. Because if you did TikTok lives, your shit would blow the hell yeah. up. And how they push their lives you know anybody can come onto your live and people aren't yeah as crazy on like um i don't know their algorithm with their lives are yeah. a lot different than instagram and facebook oh and, absolutely and how many uh lives or how many how much of average people do you have on your facebook lives would you say um it can go anywhere from you know the lowest to like one person watching which could be my boyfriend hi jacob or it could be anywhere from 30 you know um, but it, by the end of the video, it will say that like 200 views. So, I mean, it could be 200 people were watching, but just going back and forth, back and forth, yeah, but yeah. a consistent viewing, um, I'll have anywhere from like five to 30 people watching at a time. But I, my videos get anywhere from like 300 to, I think the most I've gotten was almost 3,000 views on a video wow. on my view or my um my lives that I posted on my Facebook so you know I get quite um quite the views on my Facebook but my TikTok I I think I've gotten a couple thousand views on some of my TikToks but nothing to where like some of these like Katie she's gotten she has a couple of videos that have a million views yep. and I'm just like, I, I don't know how these people are this lucky, you know, to get that many views. Like she was featured on good morning America and I just, some people are just blessed and I have not had my moment, but I'm, you know, still hopeful that I will have that moment. And kind of like you said, it is luck, but I think it's also you're prepared for the luck to happen. You yeah. Know? So there, there is some kind of like studying that goes behind all this. Yeah. Social media stuff mm -hmm. and everything. But yeah. um, trust me, my I'm not giving up hope, you know. Um, and like, plus you enjoy it and you love I, it. Oh, I know? love it. I I'm very outgoing and I'm very, you know, I love being like me and you we went to the um the u of m in ohio state game and someone was like oh hey vlogger and they were talking so much mad shit and you know i i'll take that you know i have nothing against vloggers or being an influencer i think that's you know pretty awesome yeah. i think it's fun being behind the camera is awesome you know doing my makeup behind the camera is awesome and <clears throat> you know i do it for those fans those thousands of followers that follow me on my Facebook because they enjoy what I do and I enjoy doing it for them just like you do your podcast because you do you enjoy doing it for them and they enjoy watching it for you you know they mm -hmm. support you and I do it for those that support me yeah so so what kind of uh makeup do you do like what kind of so style you go for? I started doing makeup as just like regular you know eye looks like smoky eyes or fun just everyday club looking eyes and then I started to go into my like special effects looks like I have looks where my face look like it's cracked marble or I have um I just did one for the holidays where I made my face into a reindeer and you know I've done my face where it's half Snow White and then half um, the witch from Snow White. I just you know I like to turn my face into it's I look at it as a canvas so it's it's up for whatever I feel like doing and you know I let like I put on my Facebook this morning I said you guys can vote. And I think it's like 40 votes so far. People have voted. I let them choose the Nutcracker, a Frostbit look, or... So it was pretty engaging for the people Pretty engaging. I let them choose what they want me to do. I can make my face look. I've been out in the Arctic, and my face is completely Frostbit to where it's about to fall off. And, you know, 
or I can turn my face into Santa Claus or, you know, just all sorts of stuff. I, I let them choose. And then most of the time I choose myself. So, and some kind of cool, uh, a little story. It's not like the people that watch you are all just like family too. No, no. I've had people come up to me and say that they were like, um, they're getting their hair done and you know, um, they'll be like, so do you know, um, though somehow they'll get on the topic of like Lucas and they're like, um, oh yeah, I, I know Lucas, um, but I mostly have, I'm familiar with Matthew. I've never met Matthew, but I watch his lives on Facebook. I've never met him, yeah. but I've seen him and I, I just, I've come across his stuff on Facebook or I will, um, I'll get messages on Facebook saying, um, my niece loves you. Uh, she don't have Facebook, but me and her watch your lives together. Or, you know, I'll be out and about like me and Jacob, my boyfriend, we were, um, we were shopping and this one woman was like eyeing me. And she comes over and she's like, are you Matthew? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. And she's like, I thought so. I watch your lives on Facebook a lot. And um, so that's got to be I, a sweet feeling. I just it is, you know, I I mean, just knowing that even though I don't have a, a lot of followers, like even though it's just a thousand, it means that there are still people out there that watch me that are not following me. So it's it's kind of cool mm-hmm. knowing it's just the ones that are following me are mostly my my loyal followers. And not, I'm not saying that everyone is not loyal. It's just a lot of people don't know how to work Facebook because I will get a lot of people that are like, I'm trying to follow you on Facebook, but I don't know what button to click. Or So there's probably a ton of people out there that watch me on Facebook. They just don't know how to fully follow me. Mm-hmm. The little button on the on the page that says follow or like, just so y'all know, <laughs> <laughs> hit it. Yeah. So, where do you see makeup by Matthew in five years? Oh God, in five years? Well, I don't know. Um, I'm hoping it just it just progresses from here. Um, I'd love to be a household name. I mean, like Lucas with his music. I like his. Beats to become a radio tune that everyone is familiar with. I just, you know, but I just would love to be a known name, if not just around the Michigan state, at least be known by the Monroe County or, you know, bleep that. I don't want people knowing where I'm from. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, uh, I feel like people from the county know where you're from. No, like all about, of YouTube. Uh, uh, no, I'm saying like uh, people <laughs> but, that know your makeup. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it your... says on my Facebook where I'm located. But you know, I just I want to grow. You know, I want to continue progressing and going as far as I possibly can and striving as far as I can. And I, I'm not going to stop until I get to where I want to go. You know, I'm heading in the right direction. I'm I've I reached a thousand. I want to get to two thousand and then eventually five, ten, a million. I just want to keep going. I just want to go and see. I just until my last breath, you know, that's awesome. That's a yeah. great way to look at it. Yeah, it's a great way to look at it. I don't care how old I am. You know, you're never too old to fulfill your dream. So I've actually never seen this kind of fire inside of your eyes about anything, you know, no, have you ever no. been this passionate about I've something? I've never been this passionate. I've always, you know, you guys have always seen me like pick up a, a hobby and then just end it. Like whether it be photography, photography, or when I was younger dance or, you know, just, all sorts of stuff, but this is just, I don't know, something about makeup just, I don't know, it feels right, and it just, it, I don't know, it's just, it, it just, like I said, it feels right. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you, uh, 
I really hope for the best of you for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really thanks. Yeah. It's a uh, it's it's really it's cool. It's a really good feeling. It's really cool to see that you're going super hard at this mm-hmm. and you're consistently doing it. You know, yes. so you gotta love it. So. I do. Mhm. So I feel like this is a pretty good time after we talk about makeup to start pivoting. Um. So when did you find out that you were gay? Yourself. <sighs> Myself. So. Because I remember we were at the anime convention and you were saying that you had a crush on brock that pokemon uh oh my god <laughs> anime the hottest <laughs> character in pokemon uh, i don't know what about him i don't know if it was his buffness or what about him but that's funny um i don't know what that's called when you're attracted to like um a cartoon like an anime cartoon what is that manga uh, honestly I'm manga not sure. porn i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um uh. but so I, to be completely honest, I've always known. Like even when you were like four, or five, or whatever. Well, if you go through like all my photos of me as a child, there's photos of me in mom's clothes, <laughs> heels. <laughs> you know, you can totally tell that I'm like more flamboyant than like our cousins and Lucas and. Like, this was way before you were even born. But there's just photos of us three, like Chris, Lucas, and I. And you can tell that I'm the more flamboyant one. So I think everyone knew with me from a very, very young age. Um, I was a tippy-toe walker. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I know that most there's a lot of kids that walk on their tippy-toes. But I don't know if it's a coincidence that I'm just walking (laughs) on my tippy-toes. And, um, but... I um I finally came out when I was I think in the ninth grade. So I think I was either Did you come out or did somebody ask you? Someone asked me, which was mom. Mom um asked me and I just bluntly told her, Yeah, I am but it came up because she was tired of seeing me coming home, um hurt and upset all the time because I'm going to be honest, middle school was shit. Middle school was so hard. It was, um, people won't, wouldn't believe it because, you know, high school, I, um, got along with everyone and I'm so easygoing and you'd think that I was friends with everyone, which I am, but middle school was probably the hardest, um, three years of my life. Like, to the point where I'd come home and I'd just be miserable. Like, I just absolutely, um, the kids in the neighborhood would want me to hang out with them and I wouldn't even want to leave the house. Like, it's just to the point because I'm afraid of what they'd say to me and um, or how they'd treat me or would react to the way I'd act. And it's just, you know... um, it, it, it's, it's not a good feeling, you know? And when people say that it's a lifestyle choice, that's where it really gets to me. It really, um, brings fire into my eyes because it's not, it's not a choice because if I were to choose to be this way, I would choose the complete opposite. I would probably have a wife and I'd probably have kids by now if I did not, you know. So kind of what you're saying, you think people are born gay instead of choosing. 100%. 100%. There is no way in hell I would have chose such a hard life. Like, don't get me wrong. I would not ever change anything about me because it's made me probably one of the strongest people I I know in myself like I'm um I have probably the thickest skin I've ever had um but you know it's it's a hard it's a very hard life you know I um suicide rate is very high for gay people and especially in younger generations and it's very upsetting because there's some younger kids that don't have supportive family like I have I have a very supportive 
you know, tribe of my own, like my whole family is supportive. And it just, you know, when I came out, m- mom already pretty much knew. And then this is the kicker. So when I came out of the closet, I told Lucas. Lucas was so scared shitless that he ran in the closet. So how is it that one one sibling comes out of the closet and one goes and hides in the closet? So, like, not necessarily it's just because he was so scared. But I just think it's really funny that I'm coming how young, out. How young was he, too? He was probably, like, in, like, so, sixth well, grade or something. So, well, I like came out in the ninth grade. So he is... When I was a senior, he was ninth grade. So if I was ninth grade, he was in ninth, middle school, sixth grade. Sixth grade, yeah. So he um he ran in the closet, <laughs> literally in the closet. And I just um it was probably the funniest thing I've ever seen. And he um finally came around and like him, you, Katie, you guys are like my rock like my like literally my best friends like I can tell anything to and I know that you guys will be there if anyone tries anything with me even though I'm the oldest you guys protect me like you guys are the oldest which is kind of funny but um it's it's a hard life but you know even and as sad as it sounds to this day I still have to walk on eggshells sometimes you know in public and it's, th- th- won't people like stare at you or something oh, all like the that? time all the time even but, to this day too yeah but you know i will never change who i am i will still be as outgoing as flamboyant and just as crazy as i'm always going to be and i don't give a shit who is going to watch who's going to stare who's going to judge like i don't care if you're going to judge that's on you, and that's just going to show who your character is. Yeah, 100%. And, you know, if you're going to judge me for my happiness, and then that just shows that you have something internally wrong with you. And that's what I never get is, like, why do we always care about how other people live? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, everybody's so worried about somebody else where it's just like, why? Like, is it your life that you're no. living? <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's just... Because they want to live vicariously through someone else you know it's they want to know what their life is all about because they're bored with their own yeah and kind of like do you say too it's almost like making fun of somebody else brings themselves up Up. or Mm -hmm. like you know and it's just yeah like lucas said in his podcast there's just people that feed off of that negativity that negative energy and that's what brings them up. Mm-hmm. Seeing other people down brings them up. And I used to let that get to me back when I was younger. And that um, it's almost like I had to get through that hardship and that hard time in order to realize, you know, this is who I am. I'm not going to change. Why should I care about what other people think about me? And... When I posted my first picture of me in makeup, it was the scariest moment of my life. Like even like three years ago or something? Yeah, it was the scariest moment of my life. When I pushed that post button, I was like, <laughs> you had, what? You had butterflies I in your stomach. I was like, what are people going to think? <laughs> yeah. They're going to say, oh my God, here he is coming out as transgender. No, I'm not transgender. <laughs> yeah. Like he's in makeup. He's, what, is he now a woman? No, I'm just a a gay male that is into makeup. And it's just, you know, people are going to say things on social media and it's going to that's how it's going to be. The more successful like Lucas, you, myself become, the more they're going to talk. And I've always said that, you know, whether it's good or bad, your name's still in my mouth. Your my my name is still in your mouth. So talk, talk, talk all you want. I don't care if it's good or if it's bad. Yeah. My I'm still on your mind either way. Mm-hmm. So so be it. 100%. That's exactly how you got to be. Um and and even without even being gay, people are always just going to be talking shit, you yeah. know? Like my last video that I put out, I had uh I put it on my Instagram and all that stuff, you know. So the people that are like closest to me um 
went to uh went on that link and someone like disliked it you know what i mean it's just like (laughs) why like why first of all why are you still following me Mm -hmm. like why do you catch up on what i'm doing you know what i mean it's just like people are just funny you know it's 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 the same way you you know the guy and guy world you know straight guys are always you know bashing each other girls are always bashing each other and you know gays and gays are bashing each other it's like why can't you guys just you know if you don't like it just don't, don't talk like about it, it don't look at it don't socialize with it why do you have to put your i mean i get that everyone has their own opinion and i am perfectly okay with that but there is a time and place for an opinion and sometimes it's not necessary yeah, you yeah. know and it's just i feel like some people like to talk just to talk and hear their own voice mm-hmm. but like i said if you want to speak my name go for it because i mean whether it's good or whether it's bad you're still talking about me (laughs) exactly i'm on on your mind regardless so you're obviously thinking about me for some reason so hey (laughs) (laughs) um and then i remember kind of chatting with mom a little bit so she told you she was like matt you just better tell these people that you're gay and yeah. then once you did that, mm-hmm. like pe- once pe- did, less people started like, oh my God, I once I did, came up to you and kept because on asking. I'm, I was sick and tired of it. Like I had a quote unquote in middle school, a girlfriend who I loved dearly. Um, and I haven't spoken to her in years. So if you're watching this, you know who you are. Hi. Um, but she, um, I did. I truly did. I loved her. I loved her dearly. She was an amazing person. She, her, um, and a close group of my friends were, and these people know who they were. We were, we were a small knit group in middle school and we, we went into high school as a group of friends and they were like, I have goosebumps right now. They were what kept me sane in middle school. That's awesome. Like I, um... I looked forward to seeing them and they were pretty much who I would run to when something bad bad happens or when I needed someone to fall onto. And it's, um, I think I dated her to kind of bring those rumors or those, you know, questions if he's gay kind of to arrest just for a little bit as, for as long as possible because I knew that it wasn't going to last forever so mom was like you know we're going into a new year we're going into a new school this is your ninth year or your ninth grade year let's let's just get this over and done with so I go into high school she's like the first person that asks you you're going to just flat out say yes. So I did. And after that, I'm telling you, it it was smooth sailing from there. Were there uh, other gay people that were in your school too? Or were you kind of almost like um, a lone wolf? In there, a were, there were a few, but I feel like I was kind of the alpha. Because you're kind of like pretty popular and yeah, stuff Yeah, I was friends with mostly everyone in school. I didn't have a set group of friends i felt um that i kind of just got along with everyone like at lunch i kind of went from table to table i didn't have like one table that i sit at um but you know it it just it i didn't realize how easy it was until they once i came out they were like oh shit we don't have anything to really pick on him for or question about or question him about and so once they realized and finally got to know the real me it um it just became easy i hated gym class why absolutely hated gym class the men's locker room absolute nightmare being a gay person going in the locker room with a whole bunch of straight guys and them being just being afraid that they're thinking that you're looking at them when you're really not. They, you, they must have, like, said that to you one time or, like, they would give you the look. Give kind me, of. like, 
I'm like, bitch, I ain't looking at your fuckly ass. <laughs> that's, a, that's like a girl kind of thing teeny anyways. weenie. <laughs> 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 like, if I'm going to look at you, you better got a big old BB, BBC. <laughs> <laughs> but that's too funny. you know no um it's just you know as a young teenager like preteen teenager middle school and high school when you're walking into unknown territory it's just it's it's very it's very scary you know so how do you feel if you would have went to school now in ninth grade being gay how do you feel like it would be Jesus, I don't know. I think I'd be even more scared. These really? kids, I think these kids right now are ruthless. F- ruthless. They're frightening nowadays. I don't know. I watch these. Come at me. How about that? <laughs> like I, I, mm, I, I, these kids. I feel like at least throughout the last. Um, I feel like it'd 10, be a lot easier. Years, I feel like. Because I remember hearing a story, um, weren't you, like, on the bus, and then uh, they, like, dropped you off, and they screamed, like, faggot, or something Oh, all like the time. That. Like, yeah. I feel like nowadays, that is not accepted. Like, people just wouldn't do that, yeah. you know? And yeah, no, a, I'd get dropped off more... the bus, and they'd open up the window, and they would just scream shit out the window, like, profanities out the window. Or, you know, um, I, in middle school, I had food thrown at me. I'd have pencils, paper, just all sorts of just random objects thrown at me. And I know it sounds like a, a random movie, nah, but it's it's that real would, life. That would hurt. Like, it's real life. I, I couldn't imagine. I, I, I don't even remember anybody getting that, like, that kind of treatment when I was in school. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like... Yeah, that's definitely tough. But no. so like it's, you said, um, it's it made you... Definitely, it's definitely... Uh, difficult life but you know we were looked at as like outsiders just like you know any other race or orientation or gender you know no one has it easy anymore and I just feel like it's I, I feel like it's slowly getting better but there's still a long a long ways to go Especially, like you said, with the people staring at you and stuff. Yeah. That is kind of crazy how people yeah. are still doing that to this mm-hmm. day. Oh, I look, I don't give a shit. I'll, if I see someone staring at me, I, I'm i like... <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Take a picture. It lasts longer. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, now let's get into like the kind of like the fun part of being gay you know so oh like how God. was <laughs> how was <laughs> i'm scared <laughs> how was matthew nito in his early 20s what well, what were you doing what's the what fun early stuff? 20s because it started back when i was like 17 oh man okay so let's go back that far what were you doing at 17 years old um sneaking into necto <laughs> like at isn't that a bar out in uh ann arbor yeah so at 17 years mm-hmm. old you were doing that yeah how'd you do that because you have to be 18 to get in there but um so would they even id you no listen so i <laughs> i got the, i had you got the, some crazy had stories the, huh i had the um I don't even know what word I'm going to think of, but um, there is this, like, I don't even know if it's still there or not, but there's this, like, Chinese restaurant that's, like, right next door, and um, in the back, there's the bathrooms, and next to the bathrooms, in the middle, is a door, and, and that, you would door, go that door leads to the hallway to the... Um, the bar that leads from the upstairs part of the bar to the downstairs part of the bar. So I would go to the Mex- the Chinese restaurant. I'd order something. I'd eat with a couple friends. Were they gay also too? Or yeah. Were they like girls uh, or anything? Girls, gay, does, whoever I was going with at the time. And um, when I was ready, i text my um my connection that was going to let me in, I'd say, hey, I'm paying. I'm almost ready. I'm going to head to the bathroom. <laughs> so I'd walk to the back, and they'd open up the door. I'd walk in, and they'd quickly put an X on my hand, and boom, I was in. Were they connections in Necto? Mm-hmm. Oh, really? I'm not saying who. <laughs> <laughs> how, but... did, how did you meet that person? Were they, like, 21 or something like that at that time? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Facebook or MySpace? Is that how you connected with them? 
oh god it probably was my space time yeah. 17 yeah it's probably my space time that's funny but oh my god let me tell you that that was just the start you know just 17 start. 17 to probably like 23 24 that was like my prime go, my go, going my out prime bars. going out i knew every bar that had that we needed to go to um, I knew every new bar that just opened, upcoming bar. Where would you go to um, mostly? Oh my God, where didn't I go? <laughs> um, so you said Ann Arbor, Detroit, um, Royal Oak, Ferndale, pretty much the whole Metro Detroit area. But it's you name it, I've probably been there. Gay bar, straight bar. Um, I was a party animal. Wow. I definitely got it out of my system early in my 20s. Were you a big drinker? Not really. Um, I was more of a social drinker. So, like, if I... Uh, don't get me wrong. I know uh, there's been a few times where... Uh, for loco days. <laughs> um, I definitely... <laughs> uh, definitely know when... Um, my I, I've reached my limits, you know, nowadays, you know, when I'm starting to feel a little buzz, I'm like, OK, yeah, you'll have like two drinks. I, and you're I, just like, oh, my gosh, you want me to drink another one? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I listen. I'm in my 30s now. I'm like, I don't know about all that. But back then I was able to do like five shots of four loco three mixed drinks. And I'd still be on the dance floor <laughs> in my underwear yeah but yeah it, it was it was if i could go back it i would just to relive one night you know it was fun yeah it was that, definitely fun that's really cool yeah uh do you have like one crazy story that you have uh back then or anything oh my gosh oh i feel like all my nights going out were crazy what were you uh you were a dancer were you more of like a dancer when you would go out kind oh of? yeah oh yeah um i we'd start early drinking so by the time we got to the bar we were already a little tipsy and then we'd just go straight onto the dance floor um my go-to person to bring to the gay club was my friend caitlin you know, or Caitlin Vinton. So how does a girl kind of go to a gay bar? Like, how? Does oh, my she... God. They love going. Really? Yes. Us. Oh, my God. What makes them love it so much? Because they... they love gay guys. Uh, like they hook up with gay guys? No. They get <laughs> their best. They get best friends with the gay yeah. guys. No. Have you seen times where your friend has hooked up with someone at a gay bar? Or that, like you said, it just doesn't really happen. It doesn't like really that. happen. No. No. I mean, I've seen people making out at the gay bar but no no but um me and my friend caitlin we would just go she was my go-to we i would take her almost every time like i would i would call her up i'd be like hey you um you down to dance tonight <laughs> and she's like bitch let's go and so we would we hit a few drinks and we'd go to the bar and we would dance until two three o'clock in the morning come wow. home and and this was like an every weekend thing for a little bit pretty much pretty much that's cool yeah what is that how you met a lot of your relationships was uh going out into bars and stuff um no not necessarily a lot of like friendships i would say a lot of relationships i met probably yeah probably from going to the bars you know meeting them through friends and stuff like that um i would say those are like failed relationships. Um, I did meet my now boyfriend of three years about 14, 15 years ago. You probably did not know that, but I've known Jacob since we were both 18. Oh, wow. So we did meet Was at a he bar at the time, too. Yeah, we met at a bar. Um, but I'd say this is probably the one relationship that was a success every other one oof. Oof. i would not go back to those <laughs> sorry if you're watching but all of them or uh like all of them just didn't really ever like pan out you feel like no <laughs> <laughs> uh, um so i remember you saying a story that you've been roofied one time before. i sure was what age yeah. was that um 
Oh, God. I don't even know. 21, 22. Oh, wow. So that early? Yeah, 23. Around the, it was in my 20s, but um, <laughs> yeah. I, um, you think it was on purpose? Like someone was trying to get you on purpose? I, uh, I think so. Wow, um, that's scary. I, Some Jeffrey Dahmer shit right there. Shit. They didn't want to eat this shit. <laughs> 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 uh, I didn't want those. Oh, I mean, man. I know I looked like a snack probably that <laughs> night, but they did not want this. Um, oh shit! I mean, listen. I we went to. I remember who I went with, and we went to um, Menjo's. I think it was. Was that Royal Oak? It's. Ferndale. 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 Royal Oak. Maybe it is. It's one of the two. But um, I just remember feeling very lightheaded. And we were both drinking the exact same thing. So there was no way that I sh- should have been feeling the way I was feeling. And all of a sudden, I'm just getting these really cold sweats. And I'm just like, I, something don't feel right. So, um, I remember he was going to go get us another drink, my friend. So I'm, um, um, by myself out on the patio and I'm, I was like this, something don't feel right. I'm like talking to myself. And so I like get up and I fall and thankfully someone was there to catch me Mm -hmm. and he like was holding me and I'm like, you know, like. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> so I um I he's like carrying me out my friend notices me he's like hey he's with me he's with me so we're like walking out and I'm in a we're in an alleyway I, I remember this and I um I'm like dry heaving and he's like just throw up and I'm like I can't I can't so I'm like ugh, swallowing it because that's my biggest phobia I cannot stand throw up, even my own. But all of a sudden, I accidentally farted. (laughs) I fart because of the pressure. I'm like, and I'm like, he's like, oh, my God, you can fart, but you can't throw up. I was like, it was an accident. It was an accident. So I'm like, okay, I'm fine. So I'm like, I think we're good. I think we can get home. So we're like literally just get on the road. On the expressway and I'm like uh oh I'm like this is not good mm-hmm. and this is when we I didn't have an electric window car I had so I'm like <laughs> <laughs> like trying to roll my window down as fast <laughs> as I can and I'm like this I'm like I can't and all of a sudden I just barfed out the window no on the window because oh. I didn't get the window down fast enough so it's like a little, just like a little, probably a little piece got out the and window. And then, so how did you figure out you got roofied? It was, did you like go to the doctors or something? No, I just kind of just put two and two together, you know, because he drank the exact same things we did. And yeah. He didn't and feel a certain way. Is that what roofie will make you do is puke? It just, yeah, and it hits you it different. Like, I, I feel like, because cause I had the cold sweats because I almost passed out yeah. and you know because I um threw up and after I immediately threw up I felt fine you know it's just that wasn't drunk that I've felt drunk before and I'm like that I was like this doesn't feel like a normal drunk yeah and I only threw up once and so I'm like this isn't this isn't it's right really weird it was really weird and then I got home and tried um, power hosing the inside of my car. Literally, power <laughs> hosing the inside of my car. Like, sprayed it with my phone on the floor. Like, took the hose and sprayed the inside of a carpeted car. <laughs> <laughs> tried cleaning it. Uh, so, uh, would you ever, like, take home guys, like, once in a while, like, after the bar or anything? Was that, uh, would that ever happen? I'm not revealing my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how My about... My whole phase. Um, so, were you a giver or a taker? 
Oh my God, the world will never know. <laughs> you can't even share it. No, uh, the world will never know. That stays in the bedroom. That stays. Yeah, that's my funny. boyfriend would kill me <laughs> if he said that on a pod. Yeah, he would kill me. That's a secret. Uh, is that usually mm-hmm. secret for like a lot of gay guys? Like they don't really like to no? say that. No, they will. <laughs> They'll throw their juicy laundry all over the place. But <laughs> no, mine stays in the bedroom. Uh. Mm-hmm. Okay. Nice um, try. <laughs> you know, I bet you, I guarantee people from Matthew with makeup would uh, appreciate knowing. But, uh, no, they would not. <laughs> yes, yes, they would. No, they would not. Uh, no. I hope they comment. They're like, man, I wish you would have answered that question. Mm, no, well, they're never going to know. Use your imagination. Um, So you got a pretty big obsession with Harry Potter. Oh, my God. Yes. Like, what's your favorite part about it? The fantasy world, you know, just knowing that it's not real and just, I don't know. It's just something about it. It's just one of those, I'm sure like everyone has like one of those kind of movies that they can just like put in and it instantly brings comfort to them. Like you can be having a bad day or you feel kind of crappy and you just put that movie in and it just instantly eases you Mm. just something about it so that just became one of those movies that i just constantly would put in and the more i'd watch it i'd find something new in the movie because they're so long the movies and i'm like oh that's really cool i'm like oh that's interesting and just the whole magic part and you know the whole storyline it's just it's really good and i just I don't know. I just have always had an obsession with Harry Potter ever since then. I don't know. One thing I will say, uh, I probably watched it like I've only watched through the first three, so I'm I haven't watched the whole thing. But oh my god, the You're... acting is really like on point that with that is. movie. Like yeah, that's one thing that surprised me. I'm like, mm-hmm. wow, this is super good. It is. It really is. I mean, it kind of reminds me. I've only seen I think like the first Lord of the Rings, but the acting in that movie is spot on too. Yeah, you know, it reminds me of that, and it's um. And it's a foreign film, you know, Harry Potter, because they're all English. Mm -hmm. And I think so is like Lord of the Rings. And it's like, why can't Americans make (laughs) movies that good? Like, why, why, why do we suck? Yeah. But no, I'm just kidding. But um, they, the acting is, they, they're great. They're absolutely great. You know, I, I've just, I don't know. I've been obsessed with Harry Potter for a very long time and. Um, I don't very support the, the author of Harry Potter though. She, um, has allegations that she's transphobic. Um, apparently that she don't support trans people, Mm -hmm. that she's made some comments that she's transphobic, but I don't let that really get to me, you know? I don't care because especially if you love Harry Potter so much. I love Harry Potter that so much that I you can't, can't just look let, like, past the author. And you can't let like politics get in the no, way. No, you know I don't. Mean? I don't. I try not to get into politics, you know. And besides, they're so confusing. Anyways, <clears throat> I, I, I get so dumb when it comes to. I'm like, huh? Well, I just think it's like our opinion. They say it matters, but it ultimately really doesn't matter. No. So what am I going to sit here fighting, hating someone else yeah. about something when yeah. it's like the world's going to do whatever it needs to do anyways. Absolutely. So w- w- unless if I'm maybe an influencer and I have a crazy amount of flowers. Crazy amount. That's different. To where people are actually going to listen and, you know. You have a uh, opinion I have a say to this. Yeah. But it, as of right now, I don't have that big of a following so i don't have a say in things so i'm just going to continue liking what i like and you know disliking what i like and keep my thoughts to myself and yeah and uh kind of go back to this so you've never thought about sucking on no type of titties or anything like that absolutely fucking (laughs) it's never crossed your mind one time Never. Really? In my entire life. So you've never wanted to feel what it feels like in the vajayjay? (laughs) Uh, I'm just being honest. I just want to know. 
<laughs> that one time. That's disgusting. <laughs> That's disgusting. <laughs> no, I'm what they call a golden gay. That is someone that's never done anything with a woman other than make out. Mm. Have you had opportunities where uh, girls are just like, I want to have sex with you and all no. this stuff? They've never like brought it up or nothing no. like that? I've never given the opportunity to arise. Because mm. I'm... Uh, mm. God, have you ever seen the movie Teeth? It's about a woman that has control of her vagina, and if she don't like the guy, she can bite the dick off oh, of her. Oh, my god! You, If you've never seen it, look it up. It's a foreign <laughs> no, movie. I'm not looking it up. She literally has control over her vagina, <laughs> and if the guy treats her bad, she's like, oh, let me have sex with you. And in the middle of the sex, she's like, and oh my bite. Gosh. And she That's... just bites the dick off. I'm going to have nightmares now. That's going to be disgusting. Listen, that's what us gay guys see in vaginas. <laughs> Oh my goodness! Big old cyclops looking <laughs> man. So, uh, so how long you been working at Meyer for? Going on ten years. Ten years. Wow. Um, and you haven't called in sick in how long? Almost eight hundred days. Wow. It's probably got to be the longest streak at the store right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, probably in my store, but yeah, I mean, for me, that's almost three three years. Yeah, so. Mm. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, so what would you say is the best part about working at Meyer? Um, The people, you know. You got like a little work family going? I do, yeah. I... I like to make an environment, a good environment, you know, I, um, I go in with a positive <clears throat> attitude. I, I like to, cause you know, um, everyone doesn't like going to, to work. To work, yeah. You know, I mean, it's just our American, you know, human right duty. We all have to go to work. We all have to do something for a living. So I go in with a smile. I go in with a positive attitude because I just want to bring a little bit of somewhat of a light or a joy to my coworkers, you know. And so I have I have work moms that they call me their work sons. I have um, I've made best friends at work. Mm -hmm. um, Lana, who I've been friends with, we've met at Meyer. She worked at Meyer, and we became best friends, and we still talk to this day. Um, I just, it, it, I just try to become friends with anyone possible. Yeah. And sometimes it gets me in trouble, you know, <clears throat> saying that I can't, I shouldn't befriend every everyone, but it's just I mean, who I am. Yeah, you just gotta do what you gotta do. Yep. Um, and don't you ha don't you guys have like work parties sometimes and all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah. We do. Yeah, you, know, you guys uh, get lit at those or have fun. No, <laughs> no, uh, no. Just like a good time though, hanging yeah. out with each other. Yeah. So, um, how long do you think you'll be at Meyer for? You you ever think about going somewhere different? Um, no, not for the time being. You know, I'm content there. I have a good, you know, not. I have my, my 401k, I have insurance and benefits, and it's just, it's it's good for the moment. And it seems like a lot of your focus is more going towards uh, Makeup by Matthew, too. Yeah. So. If that does progress, then, you know, we'll go from there, but. Mm -hmm. So when you leave Meyer, are you going to go out like Gail Lewis? Who the hell is <laughs> Gail Lewis? You've never seen that viral thing? Uh, it's a girl. She works at Walmart, and she's like, "No, she's like, I will not. I will go out <laughs> nicely. I'm not gonna cuss out anyone." No, she, no, she didn't cuss it. No, no, nothing out. She was just like, she's on the radio. She was like, "This is Gail Lewis, four four eight, signing out, or uh, something like that." And she's like, "Good night." <laughs> or no, she said something like, "This is Gail Lewis. I've been an employee here for ten years. Uh, eight four four, signing out. Good night." And then uh, that was like her last radio call. 
and then everybody is uh making like some like TikTok stuff about it, like some funny stuff. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, everyone always jokes about like the day that they quit their job, are they gonna say something funny or whatever, do something funny? Like, I, I'm out. <laughs> I'm listen. I'm a funny person naturally, so I guarantee that I probably would do something funny, but I don't know what that would be. Yeah. So. I don't know. Twenty, thirty years from now, if nothing <clears throat> happens with the makeup business, we'll see. Yeah. Gail Lewis Nito, here you are. <laughs> Gail Lewis Nito. Yeah, you're gonna have to watch that video. <laughs> it's hilarious. Um, so you said that you met Jacob like ten years ago. Fourteen. Fourteen. Fifteen years. And then, um, when did you guys kind of get back together? Um, or get we together? are going. So February eleventh of twenty twenty four will be three years together. Oh, okay. So, um, how did that happen? Did he, he shoot or did you shoot? He did. He just messaged me and said, hey, do you remember me? And I was like, yeah, I do. He's like, you came across my Facebook, just thought I'd message you. And we started messaging back and forth and history. Now he's your boyfriend. Yep. Now he's my love of my life. And what's your favorite thing about Jacob? Oh, my God. What is it? My favorite thing about Jacob? I love I love the man. My whole family loves the man. He's just I don't know. He um one he spoils the shit out of me. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. How so? Um I don't wanna sound like a spoiled brat, but he buys me whatever I want. <laughs> um he just likes to see me happy and um he doesn't have to do the things that he does by me, the things that he does. And he does just because he likes to see the smile on my face. But just him as a person um, brings a smile on my face. And, you know, I know the distance because we do long distance. He lives close to Lucas in Grand Rapids. And I know um, the, dis- can, the distance can do, um, hinder our relationship t- sometimes. But we try not to let that... Um, get in the way but he um he just is an overall genuinely good person he um for those that are watching nick and i we um we lost our grandma about five years ago and jacob reminds me of grandma and he's that hippie that old soul and um, I just feel like grandma would definitely like Jacob like a lot that long hair of his mm-hmm. and you know listens to old music likes you know just I don't know just everything that he does just reminds me of grandma and I think I 110,000 bajillion percent think grandma is who brought us together I think I was at a low point and grandma knew I needed someone and she was like, I got the perfect person for you that you already know. Yeah. Yep. And was like, here. So he's just, he's just a great guy. I love him. Yeah. Jacob is a great guy. With all my heart. He loves my family. He loves everyone in my family. Everyone gets along with him. He's funny as hell. Yes. Definitely super nice, caring. Super nice, caring, giving. He's just, he's tall, hairy, just, you know, (laughs) sexy. (laughs) Uh. Great smile, longer hair than any person I know. Um... Or as Chris, our cousin, says, he's the hairiest motherfucker he's ever met. <laughs> but he's just a great person. Love him. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, uh, I appreciate you really uh, taking the time. Yeah, And doing a podcast with me. Absolutely. You know? uh, especially being... What I like is I'm getting comfortable doing this, so I'm talking to people that I'm most comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, you know? no, 100%. And especially, too, I, I, do you think people that watch uh, Makeup by Matthew would love to hear a podcast about you, you know? Oh, absolutely, yeah. It, it'll start uh, kind of digging deep and understanding you at a whole other level. Now yeah. they'll actually feel like when they watch you, they kind of know you more. Absolutely, you know? so, yeah. I was yeah. like, I feel like this almost benefits both of us in a sense, you know? Oh, so I totally agree. Absolutely. 
yeah. But yeah, I appreciate you so much. No, not a problem. Thank you for having me on here. You seem like a pretty natural uh, guest in a podcast. You know, you came right in here and <laughs> we're just doing it. <laughs> I, hey, I mean, yeah. maybe maybe podcast is now my calling. Maybe I should uh, uh, forget makeup by Matthew and start pod- doing podcasts. Podcast by Matthew. <laughs> maybe I should just start doing my makeup on my podcast. Yeah, wow. Yeah, that's a... Yeah, you uh you're pretty good uh media influencer so I I need to have more connections and maybe I can start doing it all be a jack of all trades. Mm-hmm. So so like I said go follow uh Matthew by <gasps> makeup by Matthew on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok on all of it. Yep, blow it blow it up, you know, go follow him. Thank and you. uh Get Make sure you follow streams. Notorious Nick on YouTube. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. <laughs> All right, y'all. Appreciate it. Peace out. Peace.